So, Morris, give us a summary of Aviva's full-year financial results. Yeah, 2019 was, was a good year for Aviva. I actually think it was a bit of a galvanizing year as we started to make you know, lots of changes. But you know, record operating profit, you know, up to $3.2 billion. Uh, we had a return on equity, 14.3%, so certainly ahead of our 12% you know, target. And we generally saw decent growth amongst all of our businesses. And we saw our customers grow 2% to just over $33 million. So that was, that was quite a you know, decent accomplishment. We've seen our TNPS scores um, in many countries around the world uh, reach record highs. And you know, Aviva's always been at the heart of what we do, cared about our customers, whether that's helping them you know, save for their future, helping plan their retirement, or really protecting you know, what matters most to them. I think, listen, more, more recently, we look at you know, some of the storms we've had here in February in the UK, but even before the first raindrop fell, you know, we were out there. We were trying to you know, contact vulnerable customers, help them through this. We were setting up mobile units. You know, when we do that, that's Aviva at its best. What are the key numbers that you really want to highlight today, Morris? Obviously, you know, you start with, with operating profit. I mean, that, that, is a good, that is a good outturn. We've also seen our earnings per share grow to just over 60p at, at, at 8%. But, you know, given the uncertainty that, that's out there in the world, seeing our capital strength all, also move up to 206% says at Aviva, we are ready and resilient for whatever comes forward. And actually, that's what our customers expect from us. They expect that sort of uh, comfort that when they buy a product or service from Aviva, you know, we're there to help deliver a better tomorrow for them. So when you look across the Aviva businesses, what really stands out to you? There's a number of highlights. Certainly our Canadian business, that was a strong recovery. We saw our combined operating ratio improve to circa 97. I think that it's going to continue to strengthen as we look to 2020. Um, I think our Asian business, we're up to about 1,800 advisors now, so we're providing choice, which is a great thing in that market, you know, to all of our customers in, in Asia. Europe, certainly parts of Europe had some challenges, you know, with, with lower interest rates. So that made, you know, certainly in our French business challenging, but actually basically standing up and saying to customers, well, listen, we can also offer you Unilink products and seeing that growth in Unilink. Uh, Poland had a solid year. Um, certainly here in the, in the UK, we grew to record uh, volumes in our bulk purchase annuity, helping, helping corporates, savings and retirement, did seven and a half billion in net flows. We're the leader in workplace pension. Our platform's up and running and that's starting to resonate with customers. So I think we had lots of highlights across the group. Great, and in terms of Aviva investors, what, what are your reflections on that? Our financial performance is down Aviva investors, but you know, you, when you look at that business, you have to look at lead and lag indicators. And certainly when you look at the sort of fund performance, you know, I think 80% of our funds are now beating benchmark. That's a great performance. So that momentum is there. What's driving these improved results? Firstly, it is all about, about people and accountability. You know, we've simplified Aviva into five divisions. We've said to leaders, you know, with that comes huge responsibility, so you are accountable for your business. So I think, and we've done that with a combination of the amazing people we had at Aviva. We've also brought in some, some new people. Secondly, we're focusing on the fundamentals. You know, we're an insurance company. And if you do a darn good job at being an insurance company, around pricing, around underwriting, around investment performance, around customer service, around being efficient, guess what, you absolutely win. And I think lastly, and you know, arguably most importantly, which is why I'm finishing it, it's about the customer. It's at the heart of who we are, it's at the heart of what we do. Continue to simplify the service, continue to improve the convenience so that Aviva is always on, ready to meet their, their needs and their demands when our products call, that's hugely important. There's a lot going on in the world. How's Aviva positioned to respond to those challenges? Well, listen, we're 324 years young. Um, we've seen an awful lot of challenges. Um, certainly the one that, that, that's you know, very recent is, is COVID-19 or the coronavirus. It's early days yet, and certainly there's an awful lot of you know, global uncertainty around it. Um, and our customers expect us to be open, you know, whether, it's, whether it's rating or whether it's pouring or whether you're dealing with you know, global situations like that. But Aviva's ready and, uh, you know, we'll respond and, and I think that's what makes us different. We've been there, we've done it before. What are you most proud of? That's a great question. I think I'm most proud probably of the culture and it's starting to change. You know, I inherited this amazing company and I always said it was always about, you know, finding our path, finding our, finding our vision, finding out what makes us different, what makes us special, what makes us unique. And we have so much to be proud of. The reality is, we're making this a better company, you know, each and every day. Um, that's come through in the numbers and that's what I'm most proud of. Have you got anything you'd like to say to the people who work at Aviva? 
Thank you. Day in, day out, you've continued to deliver for our customers. Feels like we've done an awful lot of heavy work. Um, it has come with a decent set of, of numbers, but now it's about moving forward with pace. Right? No regrets. Um, let's just let's just do it.